Hello, my name is Acidic Portal, and welcome to my next YouTube video. In this video, this isn't really much of a tutorial, it's just more so a way of showing you how a lot of the physical rendering of the game works. So I'm going to insert a part, and, uh, I'm, and I'm going to explain to you what this is all about. In Roblox, there is a thing called wireframe rendering. If we click on this in the View tab, as you can see, everything kind of turns into these like lines. So what these are is these are actually the outlines of the parts of the games. This is the geometry of what they're made out of. So if I scale this up, the middle line should change. If we insert another one of these parts, there should be another one of these. So each face, so each face in a regular part is actually split in half so what this actually is is two faces on one face i know that's a little confusing but it's like that on all six faces so there's actually 12 faces here because on a cube there's six faces and each of these are split in half on a right angle there's actually 12 faces so because there's two of these there's the base plate and there's the part there should actually be 24 faces in the workspace. If I go to stats, these are all, so these are a bunch of things in the game that actually, it, it tells you like the rendering, it tells you, it, it just tells you a lot of different stuff. It tells you the graphics. It, it tells you stuff about the, what's happening in the server of the game. So if I go to summary, it says 118 parts because I have plugins installed in Roblox. We have we also have this. This is like a grid, and it stretches out forever, pretty much. So I could just keep going out for forever. That's another thing. Grid material it turns these into checkers, so th it's a way of measuring things, and uh, you can move things on an axis, that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool, but it actually applies it to all parts in the game. So, but what my point was is that, so if we go back to wireframe rendering, even the XYZ grabs are also like physical assets. So these two are also have uh, faces to them, but because it's scaled to the camera, it stays like the same size relative to the camera. So no matter how small or big you get, they... They keep shrinking, they keep getting bigger. If I insert, insert another one of these, it's still divided up into six faces. So if I go into the workspace and I go back to normal, and I search up just like a image right here. So, so if I move this, as you can see, it still has six faces that we can actually move this to. So I could put this on the bottom. And that face would still be there. I could put it on the top. So we can actually change this as many times as we would like. So so the point is pretty much that all objects in the game are rendered through faces. So if you know the software Blender, uh, this is pretty much what everything is made out of, is just faces, because the, we're still looking at 2d objects but in the workspace or in modern video games they have depth and these wireframes that we're looking at allows 3d objects to still have depth so but even though there's more so there's more faces in this circle right or well the sphere rather so using these will actually make your game lag a lot less versus this because these if you have a ton and a ton of these, because these have hundreds of faces compared to this, which just says 12. So um, if we insert like a cone, we, we can see like the same thing happening. Um, it looks pretty cool, but it's, it's kind of weird if you think about it. And by the way, depending on the color of the parts, it'll actually change the color to whatever the part is because it's still the outline of the actual parts themselves. If you zoom out, it's like you can't even really tell. So I could insert 
a corner wedge. Uh, this only has one, two, three, four, five, six faces. One, one, two, two on the bottom. So that would be four, five, six. So this has six faces. And then we got the wedge part. And this also has two faces on each side, except for this side, because the the way in which so these are actually just pretty much half of the regular bricks, but everything kind of looks the same if you're if you get rid of the middle. So but it has that same kind of dynamic of lines in the middle. So but if we go to regular it, it just looks like a normal part because essentially um, corner wedges are actually half of the original part. So, so if we go back to Roblox, let's let's actually do something a little bit more interesting. Let's insert a truss. So a truss is a special type of part in Roblox which is allowed to be climbed so but it ha it's very interesting because once you get to a certain level it'll automatically add uh like more to it but until it's at that point it doesn't do anything and then once you get to like one one part height more it adds another truss so trusses are cool because uh your character in the engine itself your character automatically knows what to climb so if there's objects that are close enough to each other it knows what to climb and this is one of those objects so or this is designed specifically for that so if we go back to this we go back to rendering uh there, there's a lot of there's a lot of faces inside of this uh especially this one you've probably seen trusses a lot in obbies but some of you might have not known that this is actually uh, built into the game, but pretty much uh, everything else is the same. You can change its texture to pretty much anything. It could change its color to yellow. So all, all the rest of that is the same. And uh, so if I go to, I think it has, yeah, it has a bunch of properties. So we could change it so only one side has the bars we i could change it so it has no supports at all so it just kind of looks like scaffolding a little bit from minecraft but yeah that i thought that was interesting so let's actually insert a mesh so i'm gonna just do like rubber duck or something what the heck apparently that doesn't exist so let's just put bloxy and right something something very simple so well actually it's not that simple but so meshes are not actually parts meshes are objects that are also 3d however uh they can be stretched out they can be moved around that kind of stuff but unlike a part you can't actually you can't actually union and negate trusses so sorry not well you can't do them either but you can't union and negate meshes uh, is what I'm saying. So if we go to wireframe rendering, uh, as you can see, all of this has renders and stuff in it as well. Uh, if we go to like, uh, if we do the domino crown or whatever, uh, wow, that's that's huge. But um, I did not expect it to be that big. Scubus, so that's very disturbing, uh, but. But yeah, this also has wireframe outlines and you can kind of see it and it has, you know, it has textures and stuff. So, but you can get rid of the textures, but because that's not what we're doing. So what I'm basically saying is all objects in the game uh, have these properties to them. And when your game gets very, very detailed, there's a lot of stuff uh, you want to make sure that you're grouping things together it it helps the game not kind of overload itself so this was just a nice review not not a very long video but uh, i just wanted to point that out there and um, i'm actually going to be making a video soon on how to upload meshes from blender into your game
So if you like the video, like if you like, dislike if you dislike. And that's about it. I'll see you guys later.